Finally, we focus on placement because the same methods that achieve high percentages of emergence also promote greater uniformity of emergence. No, we're not talking about the spacing between plants. We're talking about the plants emerging at the same time as neighboring plants. This uniformity of timing of emergence is important for maximizing yields and profitability. This added yield potential from having all the plants emerge at the same time is the icing on the cake, and this gain is achieved with simply a bit more attention to planting details. How much yield potential is lost due to non-uniform timing of emergence? Several Corn Belt studies indicate that around 6% of total corn grain yield is lost when one-fourth to one-half of the plants are six or seven days late. Multiply that out on your corn acres and you'll see that a very nice return on investment can be had from some carefully chosen planter attachments and adjustment. Interestingly, the percentage of yield loss may be considerably greater under the tougher dryland conditions associated with the plain states. A recent study by Paul Yassa, an ag engineer with the University of Nebraska Extension, shows that corn yield losses are closer to 34% on upland soils during a moderately dry summer. Finally, we focus on placement because the same methods that achieve high percentages of emergence also promote greater uniformity of emergence. No, we're not talking about the spacing between plants. We're talking about the plants emerging at the same time as neighboring plants. This uniformity of timing of emergence is important for maximizing yields and profitability. This added yield potential from having all the plants emerge at the same time is the icing on the cake, and this gain is achieved with simply a bit more attention to planting details. How much yield potential is lost due to non-uniform timing of emergence? Several Corn Belt studies indicate that around 6% of total corn grain yield is lost when one-fourth to one-half of the plants are six or seven days late. Multiply that out on your corn acres and you'll see that a very nice return on investment can be had from some carefully chosen planter attachments and adjustment. Interestingly, the percentage of yield loss may be considerably greater under the tougher dryland conditions associated with the Plains states. A recent study by Paul Yassa, an ag engineer with the University of Nebraska Extension, shows that corn yield losses are closer to 34% on upland soils during a moderately dry summer. However, in a cool, wet spring season followed by abundant summertime rain, such as was the case in the Nebraska test site in 2008, Yasa found only 10 or 11% yield loss when emergence timing was erratic. Although 10% yield loss is still a very significant dollar figure for something that is entirely preventable. And notice that Yasa's 2008 study, despite the smaller percentage of loss due to erratic timing of emergence, the yield loss from non-uniform plant spacing was far smaller yet, or sometimes completely non-existent, which confirms Yasa's findings from 2007. From the two years of results at two sites each year, Yasa concludes in his own words that emergence uniformity was more important than spacing uniformity. Another Nebraska study, conducted in the early 1970s by Dale Flowerday, also showed large yield losses similar to Yasa's 2007 results when dryland corn emergence was non-uniform by a few days, with the later plants essentially becoming weeds if delayed by six or seven days. The take-home message of this research is that despite all the worries about obtaining the proverbial picket fence plant spacing for corn, the yield losses from non-uniform spacing are almost trivial in comparison to the losses from erratic timing of emergence.